Out 1015 Hammer, I would call the House Tax Committee to order. Uh, we will uh, get right into the bill here and we'll officially call the meeting to order uh, when we have a quorum. So we will wait for a quorum to uh, officially call the meeting to order and take care of some committee business here. So when we have a quorum, uh, I will be moving House File 1091. I will then be moving uh, the, uh, I believe, believe it's the author's amendment. Okay, we'll be move, I'll be moving the author's amendment. Uh, and we'll go from there. So let's, uh, Representative Hansen, uh, welcome to the Tax Committee. Let's proceed with your bill as if it is amended and before us, which neither have happened. But we'll just pretend. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for your impending generosity. I anticipate uh, <laughs> that it will probably pass the amendment. Uh, and thank you, members of the committee, uh, for the opportunity. As you may remember, uh, and some of you that have been here a while, um, I've moved uh, or introduced or moved this bill or amendment uh, for several years relating to the debate on Sunday sales. And last year, uh, during that debate, I moved it again and uh, had the bill introduced. It was heard in uh, Chair Schumacher's committee um, and is in front of you now. And as the bill has moved, uh, my intent here was to capture some of the increased revenue, tax revenue, uh, from the anticipated Sunday sales and using those for recovery programs. And as this journey has occurred, I have uh, learned more about uh, alcohol taxes and uh, recovery programs. And uh, I, the reason we have a DE1 amendment is uh, in working with nonpartisan staff and uh, the agencies, uh, learning on what which would be more appropriate and how uh, we could track the dollars. Um, and I do have testifiers. I, I should note, Mr. Chair, and I think you know this, that you know as a legislative branch, we are a separate and equal branch of government. The executive branch, uh, this is not one of their initiatives, but they have provided technical support in terms of how these things would work. So uh, what I am doing is capture, because the agency, uh, the Revenue Department has had difficulty determining exactly how much increased tax revenue there has been from Sunday sales. And I think as the debate went on, there was question of whether the sales would actually be spread out over sales that were occurring on the other six days may be occurring now on Sunday. So looking at how do you actually measure this if there's an increase. Uh, I'm not looking at the excise tax. I'm looking at the gro liquor gross receipt tax where there uh, is an annualized increase and I'm taking 5% of that increase to go towards recovery programs and that 5% is split two ways, one into treatment programs and one into uh, uh, prevention programs. So 50% of the revenue that would come in. And Mr. Chair, wanting to make sure that you were able to have uh, uh, no consequence on the existing budget, I have this going into effect in the DE1 on July 1st, 2020. So that should help you, you know, where you could place this in any omnibus bill uh, and it wouldn't have an impact except in the tails, which would be accounted for with future uh, future forecasts because the dollars that would come out uh, that are currently from the liquor gross receipts tax that go into the general fund, uh, that would be, have to be accounted for. Uh, we would be dedicating those towards treatment uh, and prevention programs. So I do have uh, nonpartisan staff here to describe how the tax uh, allocation was determined. Okay, thank you. And with that, Representative Hanson, thank you for that. And we'll go to staff uh, shortly here. But we do have a quorum, so I'll officially call the meeting of the House Tax Committee to order. Representative Schultz moves the minutes of Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. Any additions or corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. Thank you, Representative Schultz. Uh, I will move House File 1091. I will now move the uh, H1091 DE1 amendment. Any discussion? This is an author's amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. We now have the bill before us as amended. 
And I think what we'll do is I think we will go to staff just for a little more methodology on how this was determined, how the numbers were determined. And also, I have uh, two folks that would like to testify, I believe, on behalf of the bill, uh, Sarah Erickson and John Reynolds. I can't wait to get John Reynolds up here. <laughs> oh, it's not John Reynolds? It's not right. Oh, John Reich, that'll be even more fun. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, so John Reich. Okay, we... Okay. So with that, uh, is there anyone who wishes to testify with concerns uh, on House File 1091 as amended? Would the department like to make comments? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> Okay, so with that, uh, Representative Hanson, if it's okay, we'll go to nonpartisan staff for a little description yes. of how this was determined, who would be doing that, Ms. Templin. So if you could come before the committee, Ms. Templin, uh, and just for the committee to kind of see how you arrived at the numbers that you have. And Ms. Please state your name and who you represent for the record, please. Cynthia Templin, House Fiscal Staff. Um, you have a revenue estimate for House File 1091 um, with the DE1 amendment. And um, what this amendment does, it just it is just a straight um, percentage dedication of the total revenues from lo liquor gross receipts tax. Um, it is a straight 5% of the total revenues collected would be dedicated to the two sources identified in the bill. And that's it. It's Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any questions for members from Ms. Templin? at this point okay uh representative petersburg yeah uh, thank you mr chair i still am concerned about how we determined uh there's a really a clear delineation annually on the increase in sales tax due to sunday liquor sales versus uh just a, a normal growth in sales as well i mean how, how do we exactly determine that because that seems to me uh, the estimate seems higher to me than i would have expected so Ms. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the the um, amendment, the DE1, um, is just a straight dedication of the liquor gross receipts tax, um, 5%. The, um, it is separated from any association from um, an increase in revenue from Sunday sales. Now, there's no there's no linkage to um, Sunday sales. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so with that, uh, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just did want to note uh, that Representative Frankie uh, sitting next to me as a co-author of, of the bill, Representative Loon, a uh, number of folks who are on the, on the committee. Uh, the rationale for taking the straight uh, percentage rather than spending the administrative cost for either the, the liquor store operators or the uh, administration of calculating out each Sunday, uh, we wanted to make it as simple as possible and looked at that 5% as an as example. Representative, before we go to Representative Schultz, Representative Frank, you would like to make any comments? Or? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just here in support of this bill for Representative Hansen. Um, I think anything that we can do to put money into this system to help people to battle addiction and um, other such substance abuses and programs to help people um, become more productive citizens, um, I'm all for that. So I'm definitely here in support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Frankie. Uh, Representative Schultz, to the author or staff. Or. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I just want to thank the authors for bringing this forward. Uh, my mother was an alcohol and drug abuse counselor most of her professional life, and I really saw the positive impact if timely you can get timely treatment and the success of individuals who are recovering. Um, I just have a question. Do we know the increase right now uh, from Sunday liquor sales? Representative Hanson. Mr. Chair and Representative, uh, we don't know. <laughs> the, 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 it's very, very difficult to determine. I think that's part of in talking with how could we, if you look at the original bill, it was saying make a determination mm -hmm. and then capture that. And we don't know exactly how much is there. Do we know what the, no, no. thank you, Mr. Chair, do we know that the, the, if there was an increase to date? In general, Ms. Templin, uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Schultz, in um, in discussing this uh, the the proposal, the one E version of the bill, um, which was based on the increased Sunday sales um, and the revenue, um, the department did did um, did not have a, a methodology on how to measure that. Um, 
um, and perhaps the department can elaborate more on this. But based on their initial analysis, they were indicating that right now there would be a zero um, increased revenue amount from Sunday sales based on their initial analysis. Interesting. Thank Representative you. Schultz. Okay, uh, Representative Carlson. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a um, question. I like the direction of the bill, but I'm looking at the way that it's allocated between the two departments. And um, we talk about initially uh, substance abuse and alcohol abuse, and then when we get further down in the bill, when we're talking about the Department of Health, we talk about alcohol abuse. And uh, why the uh, shift where we're talking about, uh, I, I'm assuming that when we talk about substance abuse, we're talking about uh, other chemical dependencies, drugs, or whatever, and uh, then we narrow it down to just alcohol for the second part of the allocation to the Department of Health. Is that, for some reason, intentional, or should we not be talking about both substance abuse and alcohol for the second uh, allocation there? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Carlson. It's my understanding is this is the terminology that's used uh, between the two agencies that the substance abuse disorder prevention intervention, treatment, and recovery-oriented services the, is what's referred to as in these programs, and that the health department alcohol abuse prevention activities is the, is the determination, is not, I understand the, the point of your question. It's my understanding this is the, and I'm not on the health care committees, but it's my understanding that this is the terminology that is used in those programs in the various agencies. Mr. And Mr. Chair, one of the reasons I raised that question, uh, as all of you know, I'm a former high school teacher, and um, often uh, students who are having problems with substance abuse, it was other drugs that uh, were creating the problem as much, at least, as uh, alcohol, and that's why I was curious about splitting it out when we talk about educational. But if that's the history of the departments, I guess that's the history. So maybe uh, I see your colleague there has a was about to say something in that regard. Representative Frankie, to the Thank you, Mr. Question. Chair. Um, Representative, the I think that alcohol is a gateway drug, that it um, usually speaking in high school and growing up, that's one of the first contacts you have with most substances. So maybe that's why the determination was put as alcohol, um, because back in the day when these things were set up, a lot of these other substances weren't necessarily equated to as, um, you know, situations, so. Chair um, Carlson. Mr. Chairman, I like the direction of the bill. I just was curious about the allocation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Carlson. Uh, Vice Chair McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Hansen, do you know right now in the state how much uh, money is spent on substance abuse uh, and money programs that we already currently have, and what is that number? Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I did ask that question and got a similar answer to the determination of how much uh, revenue is coming in. Uh, we do have the agents, both agencies here who could provide some, because there's, there's such a menu of programs at the state, so the aggregate cost of determining what's being spent in each agency, I would defer to the agencies to give some indication of what's spent. Vice Chair McDonald, and we do have the department will be up here in a little bit. But They'll give that numbers, Mr. Well, Chairman. I didn't say that. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll, I'll it's, wait to it hear was from similar the department. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll wait to hear from the department. We'll put you on the list for the department. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Representative Wills. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you to um, Representative Hansen for bringing this forward. And I think it's it's very wise to go to a simple percentage as opposed to trying to track any growth for the very reasons that were brought up. Um, but one thought I had on that um, that point was that we did not have the Sunday liquor sales go into effect until July 1st of last year. So you haven't even had a full year yet to be able to track anything. And typically we would want to give it a full fiscal year. Um, so it would be interesting for the committee if, if we can possibly in the future get information once we get past July 1st of 2018 to see a full year to see if there is any difference. Thank you, Representative Wills. Uh, Representative Loeffler. Yeah. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I didn't know you're going to have the departments up here, so perhaps they can answer it. But I can just say that the Chemical Dependency Treatment Fund, which is how we fund um, treatment through the, the Health and Human Services system, deals with both substance abuse and alcohol, and oftentimes people are co-dependent. Um, and so we do have a combined fund that um, people have to meet certain assessment criteria to be eligible for, but that's why it's a combined effort um, on the human services side. On the prevention side, both agencies have some role, um, but there is federal funding available, I know, through the, the human services side on the, the drug area. We just heard about that on an opioid hearing. Thank you, Representative Lockler. Okay, let's go to uh, <coughs> some witnesses, some testimony here. I have uh, Sarah Erickson, if you could please join us. And then just for folks in the audience, I have Sarah Erickson here, John Reich. Is there anyone else other than the department that is looking to testify? Okay, thank you. Please state your name and who you represent for the record, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, committee members, my name is Sarah Erickson. I represent CORI, which stands for the Coalition of Recovery Investment. It's a group of different providers and interest groups um, that focus um, on chemical dependency health here in the state. Um, I'm here to support House File 1091. According to the Minnesota Department of Health, the economic costs associated with alcohol use in Minnesota is estimated at $5.06 billion a year. And that amounts to about $975 per person in the state of Minnesota. Excess alcohol consumption is the third leading preventable cause of death in the United States. And in Minnesota, there was over 1,100 alcohol attributed deaths in 2007. Anytime the legislature is interested in putting more resources towards fighting a substance abuse disorder, Corey's in support of that. We believe there's a clear nexus between using revenue raised from the alcohol tax to fund these initiatives and would support a portion of them being sent to DHS and the Department of Health to help with both prevention and treatment. I'd like to thank the committee for their time and would stand for any questions. Thank you, Ms. Erickson. Questions from members? Ms. Erickson? Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. John Reich. And Mr. Reich, I, we had up here that it was John Reynolds, and I couldn't <laughs> wait to have him before the committee. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll inform him as to how um, lucky he is. So with that, please state your name and who you represent for the record, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anytime I'm confused with John Reynolds, that's a plus, because it means I'd be three inches taller and better looking. So uh, that's just fine with me. Uh, my name is John Reich I'm with the firm Winthrop & Weinstein. We represent the Minnesota Association of Resources for Recovery and Chemical Health, or MARCH. We represent, the MARCH is made up of 75 treatment providers and agencies and over 2,000 uh, professionals in the uh, addiction space across Minnesota. Thank you, Representative Hansen, for bringing the bill forward. We certainly support House File 1091. As treatment providers uh, and professionals in the industry, uh, we are on the front lines of the addiction uh, uh, issue every day and it's only been exacerbated by the opioid crisis over the past several years. And like uh, Ms. Erickson and Corey, we support any time uh, the legislature is interested in uh, dedicating additional resources to uh, chemical dependency treatment. We are certainly supportive of that. In the past 20 years, uh, the MA rates for uh, treatment provider services have gone up about 3%. And uh, while we are incredibly grateful to the legislature for those increases, it has certainly not kept pace with uh, the costs uh, and the demands of running treatment facilities and treatment centers. Additionally, uh, a number of studies have been done on the return on the investment for treatment uh, services. And the most conservative study shows a $7 return for every $1 invested in treatment services. And some even go as high as $12. And that's a savings on downstream costs to society in the state in terms of public uh, safety issues and uh, hospital visits and things like that. So we believe it is a good investment in, um, um, for the state in order to do that. Um, that concludes my testimony. Certainly, uh, again, we support <coughs> House File 1091, and we uh, thank you for the time. Questions for Mr. Reich? Or Reynolds. Or er, Reynolds. <laughs> right. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Reich. Uh, as always, very good testimony. Okay, so with that, let's go to uh, the department.
Please state your name and who you represent for the record, please, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. For the record, my name is Paul Cummings, and I'm the tax policy manager at the Minnesota Department of Revenue. Welcome to the committee. And we have a strong oh, South St. Paul bench here today. Uh, so um, I am from South St. Paul, but I actually live in Representative Frankie's district. And if you're looking for a good bowl of chili, Park Cafe is a great place to go. I thought you were from Grove City. Well, uh, originally, Mr. Chair. Oh, oh you mean now? But the commute from Grove City, Mr. Chair, to St. Paul is, is a little bit long. So I just try, decided to try. Not as bad it. as Ada. That's <laughs> further. That is very true. To your testimony, sir. Mr. Chair and members, um, today I am not um, testifying on the basis of what the money here would be used for. Our mission at the Department of Revenue is working together to fund Minnesota's future. So we collect a broad base of um, taxes from many sources in order to ensure um, that there is um, the money that is directed under statute to make appropriations that fund um, schools and people's health care, our roads and bridges, um, environmental programs, um, and some of the programs that we're talking about here today. But um, today I bring a, a concern about the a general dedication of revenues. Um, this is obviously, um, it's an appropriation of revenues um, that you know, we're talking about within the tax committee. So as we talk about what types of funds should go towards health care or sort of alcohol abuse, that should be um, appropriated within the context of other sort of um, programs that come. I know we have lots of bills that come before the committee that talks about um, really important needs. I know we've talked about affordable housing. We've talked about after school programs. Um, I think every year we have a, something about animal shelters. This is another important need within the state. Um, but in terms of um, having a, that conversation, the tax code, um, the dedication of revenue is something that um, yeah. is something that we would have um, general concerns about. So you're here as a resource. Just as a resource, Mr. Yes, sure. Okay, with that, any questions for the department? <coughs> Would anyone else like to testify? Mr. Mr. Chair. Oh, come forward, please. Brian, go on first. Oh, all sorts yeah. of folks. Okay. Um, uh, please state your name and who you represent for the record, please, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Chair. My name is Mark Kindy. I'm with the Minnesota Department of Health. I head Can up you please the, spell your last name? Sure. K-I-N-D-E. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you bet, Kindy, and I'm the manager of the Injury and Violence Prevention Section in the Division of Health Promotion Chronic Disease uh, with the Minnesota Department of Health. So our mission is to make Minnesota the best state in which to live. And I'm here to just describe from the prevention perspective what, what could be done uh, with, these, with these revenues. There are, are a number of, um, of programs that have been evaluated by uh, within Minnesota from the results first uh, MMB led initiative and also uh, from the Centers for Disease Control, the Community Guide for Preventive Measures. And there are um, among the most effective programs would be the screening brief um, intervention and referral to treatment. This would be done in partnership with emergency departments and hospitals across Minnesota in partnership with local public health. And so what happens basically with this kind of program is when folks are involved in an alcohol-related event, a fall or a motor vehicle crash, they're seen in the emergency department. Among the questions that are asked as physicians and emergency department staff members understand and probe for what's going on, they're, they're trained to ask those discerning questions about the impact and the role of alcohol um, some, in some cases, it leads to understanding addiction. In some cases, it's not addiction yet. It's folks who were binging. And the parenthesis here is that Minnesota is among the nation's leaders for binge drinking. We're making key <clears throat> inroads in our young people. Um, high school and early college are not the leaders for binge drinking. In fact, it's our young adults. It's moving into the latter 20s and early 30s. And then that what we see is that cohort effect of folks who, who start losing control um, with the issue of alcohol. What starts as, uh, as pleasure or um, a, a great time on a weekend becomes something that 
that becomes an animal that can't be controlled. And so the screen brief referral intervention referral for treatment in the emergency departments across Minnesota dovetails with the trauma system that the health department supports in partnership with local public health and with the trauma system. That would be a key way that these prevention funds would, would support. Um, there are some promotion uh, uh, strategies that have worked. They, you've got to be careful because that can be a uh, promotion events or advertising events that that are not uh, well planned uh, and that are not specifically targeted can can become a um, a resource that takes a lot of money with not as as much result. So those are some of the of of the initial strategies. I'm happy to to answer further questions. What we have done in our in our tracking of and this relates to an earlier question. Um, in terms of resources that Minnesota is investing right now in prevention. Um, we do have one uh, federal grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to uh, try to understand the epidemiology of alcohol disease and injury. And so we have about $150,000 from that grant and then another about $100,000 from another Centers for Disease Control uh, project. So all told about $250,000 a year right now going into um, trying to understand the impact of alcohol and, and seeing what we can do to start and mobilize prevention efforts. That dovetails with the pr testimony earlier about the, the fiscal impact of alcohol. Um, between 2000 and 2016, alcohol-related deaths have increased in Minnesota about 55%. Um, so it's not something that it is, uh, has been getting better. It's something that has, um, has gotten worse over time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, members. Uh, thanks so much, Representative. So questions for Mr. Kindy? <laughs> Mr. Kindy, so does the Department of Health support House File 1091 as amended? Um, I think I really defer to my leadership to uh, Dan Pollack. I think that we're just here to provide to answer questions about what could be done for prevention. You're here as a resource. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's then, and I apologize to Vice Chair McDonald because when the department was up here, I never went to you. So we will bring Mr. Cummings back up in a bit. Or Vice Chair McDonald. Very good. Okay. Okay, to Mr. Kindy, Chair Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kindy, I, you know, your testimony raised a question with me. So, uh, you know, our, our government continues to want to protect everybody from themselves, and your agency does a good job of it. Thank you, sir. But uh, over Easter, it had been at least a month since I had a beer and I had six. Was I binge drinking? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Chair, Representative, as a matter of fact, you were, yes, um, depending on the amount of time. So if, if you had said number of six beers within... Uh, two hours, uh, with, then yes, you you actually did meet the definition because for an adult uh, male our size, five beers uh, meets the criteria for binging. And Mr. Chair, sure, but they were well. ponies. No, oh, no, no, Mr. Chair, they were twelve <laughs> ounces. And um, when I was younger, I used to be able to drink more, Mr. Kindy, but that's that's as much as I could drink, and it was probably in about four hours. So. Um, I just want to know what's the department going to do to me. Of course, I was in Wisconsin, so are you going to chase me down over there? Well, Chair Dreskowski, Wisconsin, they call that normal. They call that, <laughs> they call that recreational behavior, Mr. Yes. Chair. Yes. Um, Thank you. Mr. Kindy. Okay. Okay. Representative Hurtas. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Kindy? Now, now, just a second, Mr. Kindy. I think maybe Vice Chair McDonald's question probably should go to you instead of the department. So if you could please ask Mr. Kindy the question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kindy. Sir. I, I recognize that the state has uh, numerous programs to deal with substance abuse of all kinds, alcoholism uh, in particular, because that's what we're talking about. Um, we have wet houses. Uh, there's lots of money spent in the state already. And as you said, there's a 55% increase. Um, so I'm just curious, what monies has the state uh, allocated in, on the front of uh, the war on alcoholism? Mr. Or the, the, the uh, prevention of? Mr. Kendi. Mr. Chair, Representative, I, um, probably my colleague Brian from Department of Human Services will speak best about the, the services and the programs for treatment and, and, and intervention. 
from the health department side, all that we have are, is the $250,000 a year to, to probe the epidemiology, the underlying causes, the involvement. Alcohol is, Alcohol is related, directly causes deaths, and it's also indirectly contributing to a, no, a wide array of conditions from a number of cancers to cirrhosis and liver failure, and as well as then the direct the motor vehicle crashes and falls. Um, and violence, uh, uh, 40, it varies a bit, between 40 and 50 percent of our deaths by suicide uh, do have alcohol on board, um, often alcohol intermixed with, with other substances. But I think from the program side, so from the health department's prevention side, we only have $250,000. My colleague uh, can best describe from Department of Human Services um, the other uh, uh, array of, of program support. Vice Chair McDonald. Yeah, very good, Mr. Chair. We'll, we'll we bring hear? him down. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Kendi first? And this is a very extremely serious issue. So let, let's go next to the next gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Kendi. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Please state your name and who you represent for the record, please, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. My name is Brian Zerbus. I'm the Deputy Director of the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Division at the Department of Human Services. Welcome to the committee, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, committee members, um, for a little bit of background, our, our division uh, within the Department of Human Services provides uh, policy development and uh, payment for fee-for-services for substance disorder treatment for the state of Minnesota. Uh, so to touch on the question that Representative McDonald uh, asked regarding the um, how much the state is spending in the, in the fee-for-service world, uh, Representative Loeffler uh, mentioned the Consolidated Chemical Dependency Treatment Fund. Uh, that's the fee-for-service uh, funding mechanism that's forecasted that pays for uh, treatment services in these programs throughout the state. Um, that fund annually uh, expends around $165 million. Um, in addition to the um, fee-for-service funding, there's also grant funds that are administered by the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Division and at the Department of Human Services. Um, those grant funds are predominantly federal funds. Um, uh, touching on the, the opioid epidemic, the state targeted response uh, grants were federal dollars that came to the state. Uh, we also receive a, a substance abuse uh, prevention and treatment block grant from um, the federal government. Uh, so all told, all of our grants are uh, about $32 million that we administer, which cover the continuum of prevention, uh, early intervention, treatment and recovery services. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zerbeth. Uh, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Zerbeth, is that then $32 million annually? Is that correct, or is that by? Mr. Zerbeth? Uh, Mr. Chair, Representative, it's uh, annually. Um, the funds uh, year over year is not necessarily $32 million ongoing. Uh, the state target response uh, opioid dollars, for example, were uh, two years of funding for about $10 million. So, um, the, that number can fluctuate depending on funds that are available. Uh, we also, the department also uh, chases after competitive grants with SAMHSA, and again, those uh, grant dollars are anywhere from two years to five years um, that we get funding for. Vice Chair McDonald. Mr. Chair, thank you. So, uh, Representative Hansen, so under your bill then, uh, that 5.4 million projected uh, of sales starting in, 20, in 2021 uh, will be added to that 32. So the state should know, the taxpayers should know <laughs> that they, this, of course, is a serious problem. And it costs the state taxpayers, uh, well, could up to close to 40 million a year to deal with alcoholism. So that would be a fair statement. Representative Hansen. Mr. Chair and Representative McDonald, yes. And I think what we're doing here with the way we allocate this, you heard from the health department, we're not spending as much or we're grant driven on prevention activities. So the treatment amounts that are there, we'd be putting some additional dollars into prevention activities in addition to the dollars that would add on to the, the treatment dollars. Vice Chair McDonald. Very good, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, questions from members for Mr. Zerbis. <clears throat> okay, Representative Hansen, would you like to wrap it up? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And, and thank you, Mr. Zerbis. And uh, to the agencies, and I want to thank them for providing the technical support. As I mentioned earlier, the executive branch, uh, we're a separate and equal branch of government. Um, I think, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, looking at the question of dedication of dollars, which is probably uh, one in front of you, um, I think in the tax code, we uh, gas tax is dedicated to roads. Uh, there's a question that's in front of us about a constitutional amendment on 
dedicating auto parts uh, to uh, to transportation. I think this committee in the in the past has, in in my world uh, in the environment, I think there's county program A that goes out for aquatic invasive species, uh, for funding there. That's maybe one example. So I think there's plenty of precedent. I, with the the long long discussion that we had over the years on Sunday sales, uh, this was a component that at least I brought up and others did uh, throughout that debate of, you know, there is a cost uh, to alcohol and if we can capture some of that money and put it into both prevention and treatment programs and by allocating that in the next fiscal year so that we have some time on, on preparing for that. Um, I think it would be worthy for Minnesota to do this. I, I ask for your support. I know it's something a little different. I know it's, uh, you have a wide range of tax issues in front of you. Um, I know there, there are always concerns about jurisdiction, but I think it would be a worthy project. And um, I would ask for your support on this. I don't know if Representative Frankie has any closing comments. I would uh, provide him that opportunity. We've tried to make the changes in here to make this work simply. I know when we when we debated this in the past on taking it, there was concerns that I heard from constituents of what's the cost to the store owners, how much administrative burden is it, uh, all of those things. We've tried to make this as simple as possible to get the dollars to the programs that provide the help for Minnesotans, which will in turn help out all Minnesotans if we can do this. Okay, before we go to Mr. Representative Frankie to wrap it up, members, tomorrow, Thursday's meeting, 1015, uh, right here at this location, we'll have House File 4321, House File 3543. Uh, Representative Frankie, would you like to wrap it up? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll just say that um, with House File 1091 has my full support, and I hope it has yours too. Anytime we take and dedicate funds to an investment like recovery is going to pay us off tenfold. And as far as prevention, as my mother and grandmother always used to say, an ounce of prevention, and we know the rest. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Representative Frankie. So with that, I'll renew my motion to House File 1091 as amended later for possible inclusion in the omnibus tax bill. Thank you, uh, Representative Hanson and Frankie, and to all the testifiers and to the departments. Anything else for the good of the order? If not, good government all the time. We are adjourned.